Hello everyone, welcome back. So fresh off of my unboxing of uh, the goodness of nature and my brother's kind heart, Ron T. Sawyer, I am psyched to start getting into these polypores. Now, this one, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. But I cut it open, smaller one, and it's definitely not horse hoof. First of all, it doesn't even look like it, but it is hard as a rock. Um, I do see a layer up here that might be amadou, but I'm not 100% sure because it doesn't feel soft. Um, I am going to shave, uh, grind some of this up and see if it'll take a spark. All right, so we have these. Let me clear this out, and I'll bring over the horse hoof. All right, so here we have the horse hoof fungus. Um, Formis, Firmitides, whatever their, uh, you know, scientific name is. Um, I had made some amadou, which is what we're going to make today. Um, it is like a leathery, felty kind of substance I'm going to show you in a minute. But it's been used for a long, long, long time. Um, and they actually make hats and stuff out of it. Amazing stuff. Besides making hats and, and various garments out of it, it's a great, great um, fire tinder uh, to make embers. And I'll tell you, it catches it. If you process it right, now there's the difference between this and chaga. You have to process this. Um, you could use it by grinding it up and if it's dry enough you could get a spark taken on you know with that without processing it but to make the amadou you got to process it and i'll show you that process um in a little bit but that's the main difference between the chaga and this chaga just needs to be dry this needs to be processed um and as you can see it does look like a horse hoof so this is what you're looking for and this is a case of size doesn't matter because sometimes the smaller ones will have more amadou than the larger ones. Um, I did make amadou from another type of mushroom, a uh, fungus, that was growing on a maple tree, a maple stump in my yard. And I didn't know if it was going to work, but it looked like it had amadou on it, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but it was in the same family. Because I looked this all up. Again, I'm not an expert at this stuff. I've just been researching it for, you know, quite a few years um, to, to, you know, learn all about it. But it was in the same family, and I successfully made Amadou. And I've uh, done some demos with the pieces of Amadou. Um, so here's a piece I just want to show you. That's completely dried up, and you really can't get any Amadou out of that. So you're going to be looking for some fresh stuff. Look at the color difference. Now this one isn't too far gone. So now let me show you what the amadou layer is. So I cut these open, and hopefully that shows up. But if you look right here on the edge, you see that lighter orangey color? That's the amadou. That's what we want. Um, if you look at this one, you can see it right along there. And I can feel this one is very damp yet. And then these are the gills. We're not going to be using those, but that's the amadou layer. So again, um, this one has more than this one. So the, the hardest part of this whole thing is getting this outer layer off. It is hard. It is very hard. Um, so I, I've seen a lot of guys use their knives to just shave it off. And we're going to try that. And I'm also going to try something. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to uh, take my Dremel tool with a, uh, a, uh, like a rasp bit on it. And I'm going to see if I can grind off the top. Because these are such small pieces, I might be able to do that. So I have these other two need to be uh, done. Let's get a good look at what the bottom looks like. It's, it's a weird texture. It's almost like a wet suede or something. It's hard to describe, but that's the shape you're looking for. Horse hoof. 
All right, so let's get to processing these. All right, so I have my more 511, thanks to my brother uh, James Harshman Hills. And the way you're gonna do it is you're just gonna you're gonna shake the table, but you're just gonna use your knife. And you want to peel off all of that outside hardness until you get to the soft, soft part of the amadil. Now, you're probably only going to be able to use this top portion because this is pretty thin here. By the time you end up shaving it off, you're going to be uh, losing a lot. But, check this out. I used the uh, rotary tool and I got right down to the amadou layer. I don't know if you can see it, but it's very spongy. So I'm going to take you over there and show you how I do the rest of this because obviously if you're out in the bush, you're not going to be, you're not going to have uh, a Dremel tool with you and you'd have to do it with the knife, like I said. But uh, you can see how I got right down to the Amadou layer very, very easily. And I'm going to show you that, like I just said. But again, you know, you could use your knife. There it is, see that? The orangey stuff is what you want. All right, so let me show you how it works with the rotary tool. All right, so I finished this one. I'll give you a close up and I'll show you with the Dremel tool. So I just have a roto tool. I just have this, um, I forget what they call these, but it's basically like a rasp. Now, I mean, what was that, like uh, 10 seconds? And I'm right down to the spongy layer. So, all of this came off of the other one with the knife, um, but this is messy with the roto tool. And again, if you're out in the bush, you can't do that. But uh, two ways of doing it. I kind of like the knife way. You can kind of feel, I mean, you can see that. The next step is we're going to cut away the gills. So I'll bring you back over to the table and we'll okay, do that. Okay, so we have the outer shell carved off. Now, the, the first time I made it, I used my knife and I just shaved off the outside. Um, I was watching a few videos and there was different ways of doing it. Um, the one I liked was he took his knife and he went down like this. And he made some slices. Because this is what we want to remove. Hopefully that shows up. Let me see if I can get one that shows up really good. Uh, the lighting is kind of off, but uh, this corky layer on top is what we want. So we want to remove these gills. So what he did was he started very carefully to bend these up. Boy, I hate flies. I know I mentioned it a few times, but I film outside. Yeah, we lost a little bit there. Not too much. All right, that works pretty good. But I think the method that I use, too, works pretty good, too. So we'll take little slices off. Got a little bit of the gill, but I'll clean that up. That's what you don't want. See that? See the difference? Down here, it's very thin. Yeah, I'm slicing it too thin there. Shaking the table like crazy. See that? We got to get that off. So I'll get that off, off camera, but uh, I 
that's a nice piece. All right, so I'll clean these up and I'll take you to the next step. All right, that took me about, I'm gonna say a half an hour, maybe a little bit less, um, cause they were small. You know, uh, there's a lot of small pieces. Um, you know, if you get lucky and find a, you know, a big soccer ball size one, and there's big chunks of, char uh, big chunks of, I got chaga on the brain, big chunks of amadou in it, you know, and you, you could slice them off, and uh, you obviously would get big pieces, but you don't need a giant piece. And when we're all done, I'll show you how great this stuff works, but, you know, I got some decent pieces. I mean, that's, that's close, and I did get one little cut. Um, that's close to a quarter of an inch thick, so that's nice. Okay, so the next step is you need um, ashes. And I probably should have tried to remember exactly, but it's, I guess it's the uh, potassium blah, blah, blah that's in ashes. Uh, there's other chemicals you can buy, but we'll do it the way it was naturally done. And preferably ashes from the actual birch tree, okay? Um, but I don't have a birch tree, but I do have a oak tree and I kind of was looking up you know what's in the same family as a birch and believe it or not they said oak was so I'm gonna use oak ashes so the next step is we're gonna go back to my little barbecue and we're gonna cook this stuff up all right so I'm, I have my setup here I got my little Coleman uh, burner and some propane and I have a can just a coffee can and some ashes and water. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mix the ashes with the water and let this soak for about an hour. Now, I, I you know, like I said, I made amadou quite a long time ago and I just used a couple handfuls of ashes. There's people that say, you know, use two thirds, uh, one third ashes, two thirds water. I, you know, I, I'm guessing as long as it's a pretty, uh, you know good mixture of both it should be fine and again i don't use the birch i use the oak ashes so i got that much dump that in there put some water in so that was filled up to about there Then I got another cup full here. So I'm going to say about a pint. About a pint and about that much ashes. So give this a mix. Basically making a lye water. Now we'll take our amadou. Stir that in, make sure it all sinks down. And we're gonna let that soak for at least an hour. Again, if you watch videos on this stuff, it's all over the place. Soak it overnight, soak it for three days, soak it for a month. Same thing with boiling it. You know, boil it for an hour, boil it for two hours, boil it for three days. It's crazy. Um, what I do is I soak it for an hour and then I boil it for about an hour. And uh, the boiling will be the next step. So it worked for me the first time, so I'm gonna stick with it. So when that's done uh, soaking, we will come back. All right, so I had it soaking for, it was about an hour and a half. And now I put it on and we're gonna let that boil. I'll give you a little clip of it boiling. But uh, one key thing is you don't wanna let the water um, totally boil away so you got to keep topping it off and the way I do it is I just add a little tiny bit at a time um, this way I'm keeping my eye on it and I don't lose the heat from the boil so I'll bring you back when it starts to boil all right so it's starting to boil hopefully you can see that and so I'm gonna do at least an hour I may go a little longer and don't freak out if it starts to foam up 
and go to the top. Just lower the flame a little bit, try to keep it at a boil, and you could add some liquid to uh, cool it down a little bit. See it's frothing up a little bit. So we still got a boil, lowered the heat a little bit, and it went right back down again. So just try to get the temp exactly boiling. Whoop, touch that. Keep your eye on it. And that's it. It's like I said, an hour for a minimum. You know, I may go an hour and a half. It, it all depends. So uh, I have not gone more than, I'm going to say, about an hour and 40 minutes, uh, at least the last couple batches that I did. And it worked fine. So we'll keep this going, and then I'll bring you back. All right, folks, so it's been boiling for about an hour and a half. Um, I guess I lost about an inch and a half, two inches of water so far. I added water three times. And um, so now I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to let it cool down, and I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, so cool down. This is what they look like. Very leathery, dark color. Now, this next step I do, I actually never saw anybody else do it, but I like to rinse them off with clear water. So let me get that done, and I'll bring you back. All right. So I rinsed them off, as you can see the dark color and very leathery like. Now the next step, um, you're going to break the fibers and you're going to do that. I use a hard plastic mallet. Um, you could use a hammer, but you need to be very, very careful. You could use like a baton. You can use a stone. I mean, basically, if you're out in the bush, use whatever you got. But if you're at your house, a hammer like this works great. Now, you're going to... it but you're not trying to bash it right you're just trying to like you're tenderizing some meat you want to break the fibers so you do that you'll kind of see that the water comes out and it starts to get back a little bit of that orange color but again don't do it to the point where it's gonna break apart Okay, so I'll get that done to all of them, and then you have to let them dry. Now, I've dried them in my oven. Um, I've, I've put the oven on at 170. That's the lowest it goes. And then once it reached temperature, I'd shut it off, wait till it got about, you know, 120-ish or so. I had an infrared uh, thermometer. And then I would just put them in there in a baking sheet, close the door, and leave them in there for whatever hour or two whatever however long it took for the oven to cool down um and i dried them out that way and they worked fine um if you live somewhere where it's warm now and sunny you can leave them outside for probably like up to about three days i would say two or three days depending on where you live um, until they're totally dry so once they're totally dry and they've been they've all been pounded dried i'll be back and uh i'll show you what they do all right, so it's been two days drying out in the Florida sun. And I got these nice two little tins full. Nice little batch. And before I demonstrate this, I wanted to show you something. So hopefully this all shows up. I had put this in my original video that I made uh, when I made Amadou back, way back when. I'll put a link in the description to that video. And since I couldn't find the horse hoof fungus, the Fomus fomentitaris, I really stink at those Latin names, um, I found this Hexagonia hygnotus, okay, basically called a hairy Hexagonia. And what I discovered was same kingdom 
same division, same class, same order, same family, just a different um, genus and species. So I figured it was close enough. And when I made it, this is what I got. Now, I'll tell you, if somebody could say which one is which, yeah, I don't think so. They look exactly the same. So the uh, horse hoof is not the only one you can make the amadou from. Um, I mean, these pieces here, it's exactly the same. They feel the same. They burn the same. They look the same. So just figured I'd add that in there. So let's grab a piece of this. I don't know. We'll take, we'll take this one. And what I like to do is I have here my little saw, pocket saw, hand saw I made. And I like to take this and just rough up a section. See that coming off of there? You could also do that and make a pile and hit it with your ferro rod. So I like to get all of those little fibers exposed. You see that? Then I have here my uh, Viking steel that I forged. Nice little piece of uh, Florida shirt here. Let's get a good sharp edge there. I'd say that looks good. And we'll place that on the end. See that? We got it just over the tip. And we'll give it a nice shot. There you go. Now this will burn a while. It will consume itself. It, this right now you got it lit. It give you plenty of time to get this into your bird's nest and uh, blow that into flame. But we'll save that for a fire it up Friday. So there you go, everyone. That's how you make amadou. I know this was a little bit of a lengthy video, but I wanted to make sure you got all the little specifics on it. And again, Brother Ron, I am I'm having so much fun with this stuff you sent me. Um, I, I can't thank you enough. I'm going to have a link to Ron's uh, channel in the description also. And um, if you're interested in checking out other types of uh, fungus, like I said, um, this doesn't grow here, but this does. You know, so make do with what you got, and uh, sometimes you get lucky. <sighs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your views, and I appreciate all your comments, and I hope you're having a great, great day and staying safe and healthy, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.